Okay. Um, Fan, I will ask you something, if you don't mind, is that if you can share the, the slides, because a lot of people are, are joining, and since I'm the only one who can let them in. Yes, of course. I will appreciate um, if you can. Share my screen and find the presentation. Just a second. Okay. Yes, this should be it. Good. So the um, recording has started and we will soon execute. So we have time today. So we have one hour and a half. It will be, I believe, more than enough. Um, so I also anticipated some time for the questions. So we have enough time. Um, if, if any questions come up, um, I would ask you to, to leave them for later. We will do regular pauses, okay, to, to see if there are any questions coming in. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Can you? There you go. That's perfect. Good. So we're going to talk about the SimScale Educational License, okay, today. And uh, to get started, I would like to give you a very quick overview of SimScale. W what is SimScale? So we SimScale is the world's first, currently we are the only one, uh, CAE uh, simulation platform on the cloud. Okay, so we offer uh, our users the possibility to access high-end um, solvers and uh, high-end uh, hardware. Uh, directly from their browser without the uh, need for um, for specific uh, powerful computers or anything. We were founded in 2012, so we were 10 years last year, actually in November, and most of our teams are located in, in Munich, in Germany. Uh, we currently have 120 employees and um, we, we, we have users from all over the world. So. Um, currently, the last count is 350,000, but I believe we should be closer to 400,000 now. Um, basically, um, we, are, we, we offer you the capability to, to create accounts for free, okay? That are, if, if you're not, if we don't have any partnership with the university, you have access for free still, but it's rather limited. And more and more, we are establishing partnerships with universities. Uh, to to give uh, additional capabilities for education. Can you can you continue, Ken? Thank you. What SimScale is basically? It's a, a browser like this. Um, SimScale is cloud native. Um, so you won't need any VPN. You won't have to install it. You won't have to 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 do anything like that. You just access it, okay? On on internet, you can use any browser you like. We don't really like Microsoft Edge, but uh, it seems scale is extensively tested in uh, in Safari, in Chrome, in um, also in Firefox. That's the 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 key items where it's mostly tested. And you don't need any special hardware, so any laptop or so will do. You need an internet connection though. And our focus is to provide um, the capacity to run different types of studies, so either CFD, so flow studies, structural studies, relatively simple up to highly complex, actually, and coupled with thermal modeling capabilities. The key is that we, we compare to other, other um, softwares from the market, would 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 had the tendency to buy different um, different products over time. For example, I'm taking the example of ANSYS. ANSYS, what they do is that they buy solvers, okay, and they put the ANSYS logo on. Um, they do a little bit more than that, but obviously the problem is that when you are using ANSYS mechanical, for example, for mechanical studies, it is completely different interface than ANSYS fluent, for example. So this requires users to learn a new, they need to learn a new tool when they are learning new physics. The focus on SimScale is completely different. We really try to make the, um, the, the workflow as consistent as possible, uh, independently of the physics. So that's one key pillar of the, of the capabilities of SimScale is that one platform, broad physics, 
and anybody should be able to do all the physics he needs or she needs. Uh, a good important point also is that uh, traditionally simulation tools have been rather solitary endeavors. Most of the time when you are doing a simulation and a setup, it's something that you do on your own and it's very difficult to collaborate and to do things together because either you are in front of the same computer or that's it. And on SimScale, we, since we had the chance to start from, from scratch, we invested heavily in a Google Docs style of collaboration. So the idea is that multiple people can look at the same simulation at the same time and um, that's very easy to do. You just need to share it uh, with uh, with somebody else. You don't need to transfer gigabytes of data and, and so on. So that's, for example, very useful uh, for projects. And uh, if, uh, for example, a teacher wants to create a template of a simulation, then share with everybody else in the class, it's perfectly easy to do. And last point is that uh, we we have all well. We work with Amazon Web Services in Europe, and we give you the possibility to run as many simulations as you want in parallel. So we will take. Uh, I will. I will show you one of one example of good use case for this, but uh, it's perfectly possible and rather easy to do. I will during the demo. We'll show you how it works. Good. Again, a little bit further. Thank you. So the SimScale Academic Program, what is it? So okay. Um, can you come back one slide, please, Cam? The SimScale Academic Program is something we started a few years ago. But since I would say one year, we we are putting more uh, more emphasis into. And this is essentially because uh, during COVID times, it was very difficult for students to access the, the, the simulation capabilities they had in the, in the university. And we had a, yeah, a surge in interest on, on solutions like, like these ones. So we also see a lot that in Europe, in the US, um, for example, um, more and more of the education is done remotely. And we do support these kind of approaches, at least for the for what we do in in simulation. So, um, TeamSkill is essentially used by educators to teach uh, simulation uh, with SimScale. Uh, the idea is that it's easy to access, and the be the feedback that we get, the most relevant feedback, is that you spend less time in debugging simulations that don't work, and more time on the physics. So and, and explaining the phenomena and the physics that, that come out of that. So that's maybe the most important aspect. We also support more and more, uh, and since ever, this is forever, the, um, the formula student teams. There are a lot of um, automotive type of, um, of um, teams in different universities. And more and more, we have aerospace type of stuff. So more space um, coming in because of the, the space race that's going on, plus also uh, drones and, 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 and so on. So we're very happy supporting all these, um, all these Formula student teams. So that's highly accessible. Next slide, please. Good. So what do we do? What do we offer? We'll show you an overview later, but basically SimScale uh, offers you the possibility to do structural analysis, Either simple traditional uh, linear uh, linear cases, so for um, for durability, but also we do vibration impact. We have models for advanced materials like rubber and and so on. So it can be used by either early stage, so the first experience that you get on simulation, perhaps in second third year of uh, of studies, but also by the future experts in simulation. We also offer very advanced uh, computational fluid dynamic capabilities. So what you have on the right, so either advanced aerodynamics, advanced uh, multi-phase flows, um, turbo machinery, etc. So there are a lot of examples and we'll show you later how to access all this. 
And last point is that there is a coupling between heat transfer and structural uh, heat analysis and heat transfer and fluid dynamics. So you can do studies in electronics, for example, electronic systems. So for the cooling, uh, either passive, active, uh, do you want to use ventilators for cooling uh, an electronics device or do can you do it passively? We also do thermomechanics, uh, so it's rather comprehensive. In the future, we will add more physics. Um, and that's part of the strategy of SimScale to, to, to expand into electromagnetics, for example, that will happen at the end of this year. But until now, this is what you have. Uh, what's key is that we're using uh, very renowned, well-known solvers okay, in the academic environment. So for example, for, for our, uh, CFD, we use a solver that is called OpenFoam that is very, very well known in the academic environment. The problem is that it's very difficult to use. You need, basically need to be a developer to use it properly. You need to know the physics and you need to know how to develop. So it's not very well made for, um, for um, beginner students, for example. That's too complicated. Which seems like it's rather easy to access and, and run. On the same note, for uh, structural analysis, we use a French code called Codastea. That is also very renowned in the, in the, in the academic environment. So you didn't, and last point, you, you will, even though you're using different solvers, the workflows, as you will see, are very consistent. So you don't really need to learn new stuff. So new, I would say, new um, new skills for new solvers. Basically, the, the workflow is going to be very, very similar. I'm going to want to take a quick break now and take two or three minutes for uh, questions regarding this initial uh, initial introduction. Please keep in mind, we will share examples with you, right? And we will enter details. But if you have questions Ma now, Ma feel free. Yes, come ahead. No questions? Uh, just one question, please. Yes. Uh, do you account for multi-phase flow? Yes, we have a capability to do multi-phase, but do only two phases for now. And uh, in, it, it's a little bit uh, complex to use. So if you are familiar already with multi-phase flows, it's going to be it's going to be all right, particularly the one uh, with open form. If you are a beginner, I wouldn't start with that. That's what I would okay, say. What, but yeah. what about okay. also nanofluids for heat transfer? Can be done. Nan with? Nanofluids? Nanofluids, yes. What do you mean exactly? I'm not sure I'm familiar. Maybe it's not it's not a good uh, fit. Like if you have like uh, water or some liquid the oil and doped in it some nanomaterials. So ah, mm. yeah, I I doubt it. We go up to microfluidics, okay? So we do we do have some capabilities for millimeter or submillimeter scale, but nano I don't think so, because you are entering a, a type of physics that uh, that is not covered by the Navier-Stokes equations properly. I think. So it's a yeah. It's, I don't think we're the right tool for this, unfortunately. Okay, last question. Sorry for this long question. Of course, feel free. Feel uh, free. Uh, uh, so what about also like the uh, the changeable uh, volume, like internal combustion engine inside the engine itself? So okay. can we uh, simulate it? Okay, we do not have combustion models, um, so you cannot. Uh, you cannot model first the phase changes yet, and uh, also the the generation of uh, of complex gases and so on out of combustions is also not possible. But so you cannot model a complete engine, that's for sure. Thank you so much. Okay, good. Anything else? Any other questions that come in? Uh, we, we we take the time. We have time today. Uh, yes, sir, I have a question. Yes. So uh, you talked about the ability to uh, share the template between, uh, for example, a doctor and a student. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, is like each student going to get uh, his own copy or it's like Bush and uh, Bull? I see. A every, every student gets their own access to SimScale. I will show you in a sec how it works. Um, and hence you will be able to 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 use it as you had your own account, basically your Gmail account or your or anything like that. It works like that. Yes. 
So it's very easy. Good. Let's let's move on, Can, please. Thank you. Good. So create an account. You will receive these uh, these email address. This uh, sorry, this presentation. Sorry, I will send it uh, later via Ahmed, at least, so we can we can transfer to you. Um, so basically, if you visit simscale.com, it's very easy. You will have a lot of prompts, okay, that will tell you, hey, create an account with us. So what you do is visit simscale.com. The link is uh, is in here. But if you want to do it in parallel, it's perfectly possible. And you should be able to to create an account by giving your name, email address, and so on. We would we would encourage you to use your uh, university email address, please, because it will make it so much easier for us to to recognize that this is coming from today's meeting. Okay. Uh, so if you if you don't mind using the the, the King Faisal um, e email address, it will be so much better. Okay. But and what will happen is that you will end up in what's called SimScale community mode, that uh, that is free and public. It's for everyone. If you it's uh, anyone can create an account, and they will have up to ten simulations included for free. Okay. What we what we will do after this meeting, we will upgrade your accounts to the academic mode, which uh, doesn't have uh, most of the limitations that uh, that the community has. Okay, so we'll be much more free. We will access more powerful computers and not be limited in simulation, uh, in 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 number of simulations. Okay, good. Please continue, Ken. Good. So a few resources for you to get started. Here, here are the links. Okay. Um, we have a ton of tutorials in our um, in our uh, page, and these these are actually very well documented, very well explained, and so on and so on. So we really encourage new people to get started with this. Okay, today we selected a simple case. Uh, I think we are going to talk about aerodynamics for CFD, and we will be talking about uh, nonlinear structural analysis done relatively easily. So the bending on of an aluminum pipe. On the on the left we have the link to the tutorials and user and user guides, and on the right you have the validation cases, which are more scientific. Okay, uh, I will I will show them in a in a second. Uh, these are made to demonstrate that basically SimCell uh, does uh, does correct results compared to experimental and so on. And there are also some comparison with other solvers, although um, basically we don't tend to compare between solvers themselves we don't say uh, is, mm, theme scale compared to ANSYS we tend to say theme scale compared to experiment and ANSYS compared to experiment that's the actually scientific way of doing things uh, so even though there are some citations of uh, comparison between theme scale and other software most of the time is theme scale versus experiment okay we'll show you in a second the what's good with the validation cases is that they can be they are perfectly you can redo them yourself the the the, the software so the the documentation encourages you to actually redo the the simulation and validation cases yourself if you want good please please go on can i think we are good so far until uh, tutorial demonstrations Okay, that's great. If you want to um, go the validation cases first, I will. I will share my screen for a second just to talk about the 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 SimScale uh, website and validation and 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 the uh, and the tutorials. Okay, mm -hmm. so uh, let's go. So here, so can we show you again? But if you go to SimScale.com, okay. uh, I'm gonna log out. Okay. And go to SimScale again. Um, so the first thing you can do is you see you have this prompt that starts simulating now. This will uh, lead you to this page where you can sign up. Now, as I mentioned, you would input your first and last name and your email. And in company, please put King Faisal University. So then we we really know um, that that's coming from from today's meeting. That's pretty much it. Okay. After that, 
you will be able to to log into to SimScale, and as I mentioned, you will have the ten the community version, ten simulations included, no no questions asked, and I will also upgrade your accounts. It will maybe take uh, 48, 72 hours to to be to be in place. Okay. Uh, in terms of resources, okay, uh, here are the tutorials, so you can you can follow them all. Um, one by one, and uh, and I will let can show this to you. We also have everything related to the validation cases. Okay, so comparison between uh, CFD studies and um, and uh, the um, uh, real papers. Okay, we have for multi-phase and so on. So typically for multi-phase, that's use cases that we have typically rising bubbles so with two phases and and also between water and air interfaces, this kind of stuff. Uh, we also do a lot of electronic schooling. That's a big strong point of, of SimScale. We work a lot with um, with e, with um, electric car manufacturers. Okay. Um, one other item is that if you, I also encourage you to have a look at our different demos and so on for specific use cases for electronic schooling, pedestrian comfort in cities, ventilation inside uh, inside rooms, etc. And you also have the uh, SimScale webinars and our YouTube page. I will uh, I will show you quickly. So if you go to YouTube and uh, SimScale, you uh, you have a ton of stuff here. So webinars on on everything that we do. So complex complex structural analysis, hydro turbines. Uh, vibration, thermal uh, for buildings, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, green spaces, whatnot. Okay, good. That's a quick overview. I will let uh, now uh, Cam uh, pick this up and 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 start uh, showing you one uh, one demo on. Please let us know, Cam, what you're gonna talk about. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Guillermo. Hello again, everyone. Um, since we haven't met, I'm Khan from the customer support team. So uh, it's likely until you um, until your plan is upgraded to academic, we will be in contact probably. So um, today we have uh, prepared two uh, generic cases that were already presented in our SimScale webpage. Uh, one of them focuses on CFD and one of them is focusing on FEA analysis. Let me quickly share my screen and quickly start. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. All right, thank you, thank you. So, um, Okay, as Guillermo has already mentioned, um, what we see here is the post-processing tool of SimScale, and I'm only using a Google Chrome a web browser to access to this uh, simulation. So, um, and as a content, uh, as a CFD uh, application, what we are going to see today is the uh, fluid flow around a car, I mean, external aerodynamic, we are going to investigate the external aerodynamics of a car geometry. So um, what we are right now seeing is the compare mode in the uh, post-processing tool, for example, two cases which was run with a uh, five meter per second flow velocity and the right one uh, simulated with 10 uh, meter per second uh, flow velocity. And in this, uh, I'm, I have quickly jumped into the post-processing post platform because uh, there are some pretty cool uh, features that you might be interested in. For example, this is a tool where we uh, validate our designs or use uh, contours and cutting planes, particle traces to, um, to, to get more details regarding our uh, design. And this is uh, completely accessible from this uh, SimScale, sim, uh, SimScale workbench, which I'm going to jump in quickly. So once your simulations are completed, um, feel free to test the post-processing tool and uh, use many uh, features here. 
And uh, for example, now I'm going to skip to the simulation uh, setup uh, to show you how we get here. As Guillermo already mentioned, like uh, instead of jumping between uh, different uh, platforms and uh, softwares, I'm just jumping between uh, tabs and I'm just gonna open the same project in another tab, tab leaving the post-processing open. And this is how the general uh, workbench looks like. Let me uh, go over a few things before we uh, start with the simulation setup. Here on the left, we have the simulation setup. Here we have the view selections. And on the right, we also have the uh, geometrical properties and topological entities. On the right bottom, uh, we have the orientation cube. And here also we have the um, project settings. For example, Guillermo mentioned about uh, collaboration and one of uh, our participants, I believe, asked about sharing of the project. For example, assume I'm a student and I'd like to share my project with my colleague Guillermo. I'm just going to share this project with his username and I'm going to give him either only view ad, uh, view. Uh, Khan, I think you are muted. I think somebody muted you for some reason. Ah, sorry. Uh, how long <laughs> have I been muted again? <laughs> Ten seconds. I don't know what Ten happened. Seconds. I was I was muted also. Ah, um, okay. okay. Please, please, Thank please you. repeat. Sorry. Okay. Uh, then let me quickly go over the uh, collaboration and sharing as Guillermo mentioned and one of our participants asked about it. It's possible to share your project with your uh, professor, colleagues by only typing their username. You can either give them the right to view, copy or edit and they will be notified immediately. So this is also how the collaboration works in uh, SimScale. So if we are good, uh, by the way, feel, please uh, feel free to jump in if you have any questions. I would gladly answer them. Um, uh, can, we, uh, yeah. can, can you, can, do you mind actually sharing the project with me so we can show them how it looks when I pop up? Of course. For example, let me give Guillermo editing rights and invite him to the project. Uh, he exactly. will be notified via e email and then he will have access to the project. Exactly. And then, so I'm now visiting the project and I should uh, appear. You soon. can see Guillermo's profile is already appear here and then it says Guillermo wants to take over. Do you want to grant edit access? And let's say allow because I want him to do some editings. And then I'm, I will be only in the view mode and Guillermo will be in the editing mode. So this is uh, pretty practical uh, considering the group projects that exist in universities for students who are working in same project and also for students who expect, expect uh, feedbacks from their professors. That could, this, this could come pretty useful. Thank you. Exactly. Um, so this is a very important uh, item that's very, very used uh, either with our commercial customers or in other universities where it basically changes the way of how you can make this work. Um, there is a um, it opens so many, so many possibilities to for, for assignment or projects or anything like that. Thank you. Ken. Please go. Yeah, thank you, Guillermo. So I'm going to activate the edit mode again. Yes, thank you. So um, once you create a project, you will be asked to upload a CAD geometry at the beginning. So this uh, can be done either uh, from your computer or you can uh, import your geometry from an Onshape account or you can use the uh, some samples 
that are stored in SimScale library. Once you uh, import your geometry, one thing that you can jump is the CAD mode in the SimScale platform. And the CAD mode is intended for a light cleanup uh, operations instead of uh, heavy uh, CAD generations to make your uh, geometry ready for the uh, next simulation or make some small alterations in your geometry. For example, here what we see, we only initially had the car geometry. We have the car. And then since we do not need the car anymore, we also use the delete bodies operation to delete the car. You will see several operation here, which will be uh, pretty useful depending on each application. Uh, each of them come in very handy. Uh, please feel free to uh, go over these uh, as well. And there are some strong documentation for these each operation too. And once you are confident with, with your geometry, yes, Guillermo? Yes, I wanted to mention one thing. This project, this actual uh, aerodynamic study is part of our tutorial uh, page that I shared, uh, that I uh, showed just before. So don't worry too much if CAN goes a little bit fast on certain items, because everything here is very well detailed, right? And you will be able to go through it step by step. So. Uh, what is the CAD mode? How do we how do we prepare uh, and perform the, the the activities that he just went quickly over? Right. We we want to give you a good overview, but not spend too much time on the details because you can just uh, redo this yourselves later with with all the time in the world. Exactly, exactly. Thank you for clearing that up, Guillermo. For example, uh, this is the tutorial I've been following right now you will see that it's like a step by step so that you won't miss a thing. And each of these, uh, if each of these titles are also explained in other documentation pages as well, so you won't get lost, we are sure. And yeah, as I was saying, once you feel uh, confident with your geometry, uh, you can export your geometry and then start a simulation here. For example, here we have the car geometry and the copy of car right now, the one that I have edited. Um, now I'm going on the create simulation. Uh, Guillermo, I believe this is one of your favorite parts if you wanna take over. Yes, um, this this will give you a, a good overview of what is possible on SimScale. Okay, so we do offer uh, incompressible type of solvers. So this is what you would use for aerodynamics, uh, but it's also anything related to water modeling. Okay, so everything related to turbo machines, rotating stuff, uh, turbines, and whatnot will be done on on um, on uh, incompressible. Um, you have uh, also access to the compressible solver, so for higher speed type of flows, so maybe for aerospace type of situations. Uh, and then we enter the, the convective heat transfer uh, and the conjugate heat transfer. Can you click on convective heat transfer, uh, Can please? Uh, convective heat transfer. Uh, is uh, essentially used to model the convection between, uh, so the, the, the correlation of uh, the transport, sorry, of, uh, of heat via air or via fluid in general. Most of the time it is used for ventilation inside of rooms, but it could uh, potentially also be used for, for transfer of heat within a fluid, but only one fluid. If we want to um, add multiple uh, more physics than that, you have the conjugate heat transfer. Conjugate heat transfer will model radiation, convection, and conduction. So the conduction from solid to solid, the radiation between solids, and uh, between solids and, and, uh, and fluids, sorry, and also the, the convection. So this is the most complete type of, uh, of model, but there are times where we don't need as much, so we may choose the convective heat transfer. Uh, we also have the multi-phase model, 
as as it was asked before, but currently it's essentially essentially made for uh, interfaces between two fluids, so water and air most of the time, or water and oil. Uh, and then you also have the structural type of analysis, which is static, linear, and nonlinear. So this is very comprehensive. You have uh, all the type, the three types of nonlinearity that are available, and you can also uh, do uh, dynamic studies. So uh, that changes over time. You also have uh, two modules uh, for heat. Uh, one is called heat transfer, which is basically conduction between solids, conduction only. There are situations where this makes sense and thermomechanical, so basically the stresses due to the dilatation of, uh, of, um, of a solid if in case the, the temperature changes, so this is a pressure vessel, for example. And last, you have harmonic analysis and frequency analysis. Yes. Okay. And uh, this little uh, need help button, I really like if you are unsure about the uh, simulation type, this one asks you step-by-step -step questions, what kind of simulation you need, and then does heat play a role in your simulation? Let's assume we are going to have an external lighter dynamics of the car, no heat, and what is the maximum flow speed? It's going to be below 0 0.3 of the uh, speed of sound, and how many fluids are present? Only one fluid, and then it will give you uh, suggestion of the uh, suggestion of the simulation exactly quick quick for break example, here yeah quick okay. quick break uh, for questions if there are any yeah um, I got a question for the CFD simulation if I can get it on. please please mm -hmm. yeah so yeah, one of so the projects that that we're participating in is the uh, um, Shell Eco Marathon, and one of the most important things in that competition is the to model a car that has the lowest drag coefficient. So mm -hmm. when I did the simulations within the CFD here, I didn't find any or an exact option for the drag coefficient. So if you can show me that, or is there actually an option for it? Okay, we'll show you. Okay, uh, there is actually an option for the lift and drag coefficients. While I'm going through this simulation setup, I will uh, come to that. Is that all right? Yes, Le we will show you in a, in a second. Good, yeah. good question, very good one. Yes, I'm not sure the tutorial okay. explains it correctly. I don't remember, but uh, that's very good. good as well. Let's check. Any, any other questions? Yes, yes. Uh, so what about like variables that can we have in, uh, for post-processing? Are they limited or we can have any variable to, to plot? And can we get the data as Excel files? So the answer is yes. Uh, we, will, uh, we will show you how to do that. Um, ultimately, if you are familiar with uh, other workflows, when you're using the academic version, you can always download the data and post-process it in more detail with uh, with the software, soft, software of your choice. So um, we aim at being uh, giving the capability to do 95% of what our customers actually do every day on, uh, on post-processing. And if something's missing, you can always, uh, you can always download. So regarding uh, regarding variables, we we have something that is um, that maybe Khan will show you later. We have a, 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 a calculator. It's called so basically where you can uh, you can uh, create your own your own formulas for post processing. It doesn't do everything. So if you are used to relatively to very advanced type of um, of post processing, it may not have it. But we aim at, we are working a, a lot on it right now and we are adding, uh, adding features uh, regularly to, to this guy. We will show you quickly later in the, in the post-processor. And regarding Excel, uh, most of the time what we do is, uh, it's, is in, in, the C, in the result control. Maybe you can, you can take a second later to show it. Definitely. Good. Very good. That helps us a lot. This kind of questions, so we know exactly what to what to show you, right? To to answer questions one by one. So that's great. Feel free to continue asking questions. We still we we do have some time today. Mm -hmm. 
in case there are none uh, right now, yeah, uh, and I then, can then let's continue go. Yeah. with the workflow. Uh, for example, once we create an incompressible uh, simulation, which means that the, our uh, air velocity will be below max 0 0.3 and the air will be incompressible. The simulation setup, as you will immediately notice, is quite intuitive. What you need to do is to go from top to bottom, uh, completing all these uh, red circle parts one by one. For example, let's assign air to our domain. And then you can define your boundary conditions, which uh, there are several of uh, them. Can just, just yeah. a quick comment. It seems that your screen is rather slow. Do you mind uh, stop sharing your image? Um, and uh, going a little bit slower in the manipulation, it seems the, the internet is slow. Connection. Uh, so stop sharing your uh, your image. I mean, not uh, sorry. I meant I meant your uh, your webcam. Sorry about that. Everyone. Yeah, uh, so can can you please stop sharing your uh, your webcam? Yes. And and sharing your uh, yeah. Okay, great. Share this again. Hopefully just, you can you can share your screen better now. I, I just reconnected to another uh Wi-Fi connection. I hope it's better now. Yeah. I would, if you, if you can manipulate slowly so that we can follow everything you do. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Sorry about that. So, um, okay, lastly, we assign the material as air to the domain. And then you can assign several boundary conditions as listed here. We already have predefined uh, several of them, and these are only the available bonds for the incompressible simulation type. We have the generic inlet conditions and outlet conditions along with walls and some uh, fans, periodic boundary conditions. And even if you wanna go even more advanced, you can choose custom and generate your own uh, custom boundary conditions as well. And here also we have the advanced concepts that are available to incompressible simulation type. Here you can create the rotating zones. For example, if you have some propellers, drone simulations, or uh, wind turbine simulations, you are advised to use these uh, rotating zones. And this is a very well documented, there's a very well documented documentation for these as well. If you want to use, uh, if you have some porosity, you can use the porous media and you will also have option to have the momentum sources. And then uh, we also, of course, have the numeric settings uh, for the uh, solvers. Here, the most optimum uh, settings are already set as default, but uh, in case you are experienced with CFD or uh, FEA solvers as well, you can go ahead and manipulate the numeric settings also. And in the simulation control, you will have chance to uh, define number of iterations and number of uh, outputs, etc. And OK, we had a question uh, previously regarding the force and uh, result controls. Here we have the chance to answer those for example here under the result control we have the option to choose forces and moments we can choose the force and moment coefficients or force and moments uh, directly here in case you are interested in lift and drag uh, coefficients you will have chance to define a free stream velocity reference length and reference area value to non-dimensionalize this uh, coefficients non-dimensionalize these forces and then you will obtain whether lift 
or drag. Of course, there is not a general uh, direction of lift and drag. It totally depends on your application. That's why there is this uh, direction option here. So you can manipulate your um, desired outputs as you wish here. I and I hope this uh, answers the question of lift and drag. Along with uh, force and moments, we also have several uh, result control items here where you can check your data. For example, the surface data where you can check the integral or average of certain uh, variables in uh, cutting planes or surface areas. And also you will have chance to appoint some prop points to observe uh, what's happening in certain points. Okay. Um, then uh, one thing, uh, if you have, if you had previously worked with uh, other uh, commercial softwares, you will probably notice that after all these settings, we finally come to meshing instead of uh, before, right? Why is that? That's because uh, we have the this physics-based meshing option uh, here, and this uh, allows. Uh, our users to uh, generate um, physics-based uh, meshes without uh, spending too much time on, let's say, uh, region refinements or uh, local surface refinements as well. For example, your boundaries will be uh, refined uh, accordingly. In case you have rotating zones, these cell zones will be generated automatically. So you can basically focus on what is uh, important here. But of course, if you want to go, uh, if you want to do some manual settings, you can always go uh, and toggle these off and you can choose manual sizings as well. Yes, that's a very important aspect to why we say we focus also, uh, we, we really help the beginners in simulation. Um, you have the possibility to um, to go and do everything manually, like with traditional softwares. Like you can, you can completely skip the the boundary condition setup and so on and so on, and go directly to the mesh. This is perfectly possible. But something we can. So since we we ha we are a platform, we basically know where our users struggle, right? And with the 10 years of experience on millions and millions of simulations that we have accumulated in our databases, we know where people fail. And we, based on this information, we found out that most of the time it's because it's not easy for users to set up all the good practices of meshing before they start. So we looked and we spent a lot of effort into identifying which could be automated based on the setup. So basically, when you are doing your setup before and you're setting up your boundary conditions and so on and so on, you are already informing the software or of where is the fluid, where are the walls, where are the sensitive surfaces, where should I add the boundary layers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So physics-based meshing toggle, what it does is that it applies additional automatic refinements on top of of a very simple mesh. So you could even skip a lot of refinements, manual refinements yourself. You just set up an automatic mesh and it will already be very well adapted to your case. It doesn't always work, of course, right? But it's a very, very good way to start. Um, additionally, SimScale is based in the cloud. Okay, so you can run three, four meshes at the same time. That's not a problem at all. Exactly. Can can you show it quickly? Mm -hmm. uh, so the mesh yeah. that we have that was done manually and uh, one additional mesh that could be done automatically, but finer. For example, for example, um, here we already have the mesh one, but uh, if you want to create a new one or duplicate this one and change the settings slightly, you can always do that as well. For example, once I switch to mesh three. Uh, when I duplicate the mesh one, I, I can now change something slightly. Let's say something in the region refinement, let's say 0 0.1 to 0 0.05. If I want to perform a mesh refinement study with this uh, feature makes it pretty 
uh, simple. Exactly. So, and if you do that beforehand, you can run the, these two meshes at the at the same time. Okay. So, Thanks. can you can you launch the mesh just to show it, if you don't mind? Yeah. Sure. Did I change? Let me change something here, and then. So exactly. So now this mesh is being sent to our cloud, and uh, it will be available. You will receive an email when it's finished. If it takes long, I don't know. Uh, since we're talking about uh, 10 million elements or so, it should take 10 minutes or something. 10, 15, it depends. Exactly. Good. Yeah. And as uh, Guillermo already mentioned, uh, this is not something we can do only with the mesh. Of course, we can also do this with uh, several number of simulations as well. Let's say uh, you have you have a certain mesh and you want to perform a parametric study. Let's say changing a few uh, variables in a in a boundary and run it simultaneously. It's also possible. And let me quickly show you that in an already predefined uh, simulation setup. For example, here let's uh, remember our case. We have the velocity inlet boundary condition here. I can define several velocities here uh, to investigate the drag and lift behavior of the vehicle. And then once I save the results and start the simulation runs, you will see that an experiment uh, will occur. And once I click on start, instead of waiting for all these uh, simulations run sequentially you will see that these will all start uh, simultaneously this is uh, and this is a huge uh, advantage of uh, cloud computing of course for example as myself as a master student i used to wait on these very long queues uh, for my analysis to even begin it used to take sometimes one day two day and even if one of them starts, the second one take another two days as well. Now uh, I have the opportunity to start all this simulation at once and they will run simultaneously. And um, I think we can have some questions if there are any at this point. Yes, please. Can I help? Sure. Yes. So, what types of mesh mesh that you use? Only like triangular mesh, or can we have another type of mesh like square or rectangular meshes? That's a very good question. So, thank you. Uh, we have here. You will see the algorithm as a standard. Our a standard algorithm is based on uh, triangular. Uh, elements, but you also have the option to choose hex element core. For example, as you can see in this picture, uh, tetrahedral elements are used to capture rather complex parts of the geometry. And then once the mesh is kind of relaxed, the hex element core is used to uh, avoid a uh, large number of meshes and uh, more structure to generate more elements. And if you want to use a complete uh, hex dominant uh, mesh, you will you also have the option to choose hex dominant or hex dominant parametric meshes. Hex dominant is rather more uh, robust in the SimScale platform, and hex dominant parametric requires lots of parameters. So uh, we usually not recommend our users to use. Uh, this one in case they are already experienced in hex dominant parametric but you of course there are uh, other uh, options here uh, another question please so also for the material can we use customized material like if you have air but we need to change yes. the properties yes you can we you change can definitely it? yeah you can change and you can save them also so you can uh, create your own library of materials. So you could do, uh, yeah, a copy, for example. Uh, yeah, you could import materials, but that's not, that's not what we want. Create a new one, please, uh, Can Or yeah, you can just explain. Yeah. 
let's say uh, what you can do is simply uh, manipulate an existing one and let's say material A, name it as you like, and you can change the uh, viscosity model and the other uh, parameters as well. And this is also valid for the FEA simulations also. So uh, an important point is that you can only change uh, par um, parameters of the material that are relevant for these simulations. Okay, if you were doing a different type of simulation with thermal properties, it will show you more options and you will be able to change more stuff. Okay, that's an important aspect is that the interface of SimScale is always adapted to the minimum that you need. So we will not display parameters that are not relevant. Okay, but um, you can you can basically create uh, yeah another uh, materials in your library it will not show you because it takes some time. Uh, and uh, touch all the all the yeah for example yeah here uh, the air has more properties and you can uh, you can adjust all these. Does it answer your question? Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes. Perfect. Um, then while we uh, wait for these uh, simulations to uh, complete, we can quickly jump to the FEA or there was a question regarding the post-processing tool as well. Uh, do we have time to go over the uh, post-processing, Guillermo? I think let's take some time to go over the post-processing now and it will save us time for the structural. And the structural, we can go a little bit faster. Perfect. So, um, well, well, once we switch to the structural part, as Guillermo already mentioned, one, uh, he was saying how um, the modules, for example, FEA and CFD modules could, could be different in uh, other softwares. You will see that this, the uh, workflow is pretty similar uh, in the SimScale platform. I mean, the CFD and FEA, for example, the major things that we're going to do will be uh, pretty similar. So uh, that's another advantage of this. Um, okay, so uh, as we quickly jump to the uh, post-processing uh, tool, you will uh, notice here the uh, parts color uh, that shows the contours on the uh, geometry. And here, here we will have uh, several uh, operations as well. For example, for the uh, coloring, we have the option to, of course, uh, this is again uh, specific to this uh, incompressible simulation type. For example, since we do not deal with uh, energy and uh, temperature, we do not have anything related with enthalpy or temperature also. We have these uh, options and also if you want to go even further, you can create ISO volumes to check uh, limiting regions and uh, you can create uh, particle traces, even you can create animation for these uh, particle traces, let's say if we want to switch to uh, comets and create an animation for it, you will be able to see the float, fluid flow um, more clearly. And um, as this one uh, loads already, let's uh, quickly talk about the field calculator as well, as Guillermo mentioned. In case you want to look for uh, something specific, you can create a field calculator and enter a formula by using the available variables here. For example, I use this sometimes to generate a pressure coefficient, pressure coefficient near wings or uh, vehicles, uh, cars as well. So this is another uh, feature that you can use. And in case uh, you wanna post-process your results in another uh, software, you can use this uh, download option here to result, to download your results and then post-process your results in uh, other software such as maybe uh, Paraview or others as well. Um, what we have also, we have the inspect point and statistics uh, options. These 
tools are pretty handy uh, when you want to inspect a variable in certain points or if you want to inspect an integral of average of a variable to a face, you can use the statistics options as well. And the compare mode, you probably remember at the beginning of my presentation, is the operation to use to compare different cases. For example, this case is the one with five uh, meter per second. If I want to compare with 10, you can compare them side by side. Okay. Good. Yeah. So it basically takes some some time to load when yes. you load two yes. two results at the same time. Basically, you're loading two x the the info, so it takes a little bit longer. But then it's once once loaded, uh, it's uh, it's it's very very simple. It takes a few seconds to to show up. Exactly. Good. So that was it for the aerodynamics case. Um, we are in time we are okay but not we don't have that much margin anymore so if you have any questions feel free otherwise we will move to the to the structural case uh, so please what other turbulence models are available in our software the the what again sorry turbulence models ah yeah ah. uh you wanna go Guillermo, yeah yeah or... please, please please go for it come Okay, uh, so uh, for example, once uh, in the global settings of the incompressible simulation, you will see there are a few uh, settings here as well. For example, the turbulence model and time dependency. Uh, I forgot to mention, since we're here, let me uh, quickly uh, cover this as well. You can switch your simulation to transient or steady state as well. For the uh, turbulence model, uh, these are the ones that are available. We have the, uh, the laminar case, in case uh, you don't expect much uh, turbulence. We have K epsilon, K omega, and K omega SST. And uh, since we are talking about the turbulence model, it's models, it's also possible to use the wall functions with uh, Y plus values uh, usually higher than uh, higher than uh, 30 or 50 and also you will have opportunity to use uh, full resolution models that requires y plus values of near uh, one of course good okay quick structural case then let's try right. to be to be fast <laughs> yeah then let me quickly uh, cover the case, uh, what we are going to do. So um, this is again, uh, one of the tutorials uh, picked uh, from the SimScale uh, documentation page. We have here a large roller uh, that is going to be stationary. And then we are going to have a stopper here that is going to be stationary as well. And then we will have an aluminum pipe, and then this roller is going to move, uh, rotate uh, in this direction to bend this aluminum pipe as like this. And as the contours, what we see are the one misses uh, stresses here. In this case, uh, we rather uh, did not use any load but the system is driven by the motion itself, but I'm going to cover some of the uh, load boundary conditions also. A quick, a quick thing, uh, if you are seeing the same as me, there are very little frames in the animation, but it's not how it should be. Uh, I think it's due to the, to the, to the transfer of, uh, of, of, of frames. I think since we are so many people, it tries to be efficient in terms of frame sharing. But uh, it's much more fluid when you do it yourself. You can have full control over the animation speed and so on. So it can get it's, it's high quality animations. Sorry about exactly. uh, this. <laughs> exactly. Uh, sorry, I, ca I can't really see how it looks on the screen. But uh, please feel free to go to this tutorial. And there is already a finished project of uh, this one. You can already have a look at it uh, quickly. OK. 
then let me stop uh, this one. And as you can see, the um, post-processing tool uh, doesn't change much. Most of the things are the uh, same. Uh, of course, some of the things are not possible uh, due to its, its being FEA simulation now, but you can still create cutting planes, ISO volumes, and these uh, other uh, operation I mentioned before. And before we uh, skip to the uh, simulation type, not to go back and forth, you can see the available uh, variables for this uh, static nonlinear case as well. You can see the uh, displacement for messages and other things also. Right. Um, if we quickly jump to the simulation workbench, uh, it's it's quite the same, right? Like uh, we still have the same view, almost the same uh, simulation tree, except the content is different now. The view is the same, topological entities, they're all uh, set the same. And the CAD mode is also, um, nothing is uh, different. All operations that I already showed in CFD part is possible. And what we do here is the same. Once we obtain the geometry, we create a simulation. In this case, we create a static nonlinear Analysis, it's a nonlinear one because there, there, there's this large deformation in the aluminum pipe, but it doesn't also require a dynamic simulation because the inertia forces are not uh, important in this case, and there is no acceleration in the roller. So nonlinear uh, analysis should be enough. One thing um, that is uh, first thing that is different uh, from the CFD simulation that you will notice are the contexts. Here uh, you will have the chance to define uh, different type of contacts between your parts, such as bonded, sliding, or you can also define physical contacts where two parts are two where there is large deformation between two parts and some interferences at some point, physical context can be defined. And you will have the opportunity to use either uh, first order mesh or the second order mesh. And But please remember the second order mesh requires a larger uh, memory, so it's, it should be treated uh, carefully as well. And for the materials, of course, now we can define uh, several different materials. For example, for the fixed parts, stationary parts, we have defined steel and the material behavior is set to linear elastic. Well, uh, now, since we set this to linear elastic, we do not need to provide any um, stress strain kern because it's already uh, linear. So for this, uh, material, uh, we don't need uh, any other information other than um, young modulus and Poisson's ratio. But looking at the aluminum, which will be um, forced to bend uh, quite high, we need to define an elastoplastic uh, material behavior, where we need to define um, a stress strain curve, a curve actually. Now this is going to be large uh, deformation. We can define this uh, stress and strain curve to account for this uh, deformation and stresses in our simulation. Is that all right? Uh, if there is any questions so far regarding the materials and uh, context, which uh, most of the time there are, I believe there aren't any, so I'm moving on. Um, again, the uh, workflow is quite intuitive, almost the same as the CFD. You need to go from top to bottom, and then you can define your boundary conditions. Here we have several of them again, 
fixed support, uh, remote displacement. Here, for example, for the uh, moving uh, roller, we have defined a rotating motion instead of a instead of a load. But you can of course define a load boundary condition if you like. And then the numerics and simulation control are almost the same. Here we also have result control that are specific to uh, nonlinear static analysis. And then the meshing comes again. All the things we said previously are valid here as well. Uh, feel free to create several of them. I work with several uh, mesh sensitivities and then start your simulations. Sorry, this was uh, this was rather uh, quicker than the first one, but since we've already covered most of the stuff in CFD part, and I guess we are kind of out of time, Guillermo. Yeah, um, I think we 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 gave you a quick overview. Anyway, the the details depend on on your interest, right? Um, since there are so many tutorials, we could only choose two, but you have around 20, so you can you can go with what with what you need. Um, good. We still have 10, 13 minutes left. Do you have any additional questions that come? Um, so for the accounts, um... Yeah. the university accounts so before when i started registering i had to send you an email with basically explaining what i was going to do with the uh, um, sim scale account and if i had a project so currently for the king faisal university students should they just register and they would automatically um, um get access to the academic account so the way this is gonna this is gonna work is that after this meeting, so we'll be able to get access to the to the attendee list, and normally I should have the um, the email addresses of everyone. Okay, so if you have attended this uh, this event, if you create a SimScale account within uh, within, so I need to set up an automation. So I will basically give access to all your email addresses. Okay, it would take me two or three days to do this, and then once this is done. If you create an account on SimScale or you log in again, you will receive academic access automatically. And this and this access will be valid for six months. Oh, okay. And so, if yeah, people, let's, let's make it simple. Yeah. <laughs> and if people, uh, of course, uh, register after, you know, like if they didn't attend this um, meeting, if they register after it, it will be the same thing, I guess. Um, we will we will see. Um, I wanted to keep this um, as a. Uh, I think it's important that that to 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 value the fact that that people join this this session. Um, if we see that there is uh, additional interest from from other people, I'm happy to to discuss. Maybe to organize something, but maybe with the professors directly. It will be easier to to have these kind of conversations. I cannot give access um, to everybody. No questions asked. So um, we, I will be happy to to discuss uh, upon upon the needs. Of course, of course. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Um, yeah. So that that I will I will have to set up just in case. I'm pretty sure I will get be able to get the 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 access uh, access to the to the list of attendees. Just in case, do you have Ahmed the list of uh, attendees yourself? Um, or... I'm gonna. I'm going to send a form now in the chat and people can just simply fill up the form and hopefully I will send you the emails and the names of also for the certificates that I asked you about. That's great. Yeah, you will so also receive certificates. Yeah, so hopefully I will give you the names and the emails and basically everything from the form. That's great. Um, then I believe that was pretty much it on our on our side for today.
I really encourage you to fill in the forms. It will make our lives much easier for you to get access and you will you will get the access easier for you also. <laughs> yeah, um, so I think if anyone doesn't have a question, I just would like to thank you guys for taking your time and spending your time to provide this kind of information and this kind of um, like the details and the information that you provided, especially for SimScale, because one of the issues that we have, and I basically, I think I told you in the emails mm -hmm. that the usage of other programs such as ANSYS and other um, um, simulation tools are very, very hard and very hard and takes time to learn. And SimScale is one of the, I guess, best tools that I've until now found. So again, thank you for taking your time on ma making this tool and um, giving this lecture for us. And um, hopefully the students of the King Faisal University will, I guess, try and use your, your um, program or website for good uses. That's thank you thank you very much for your kind words we're really looking forward to to giving to giving you this access if um among you the professor um community wants to discuss further for specific use cases or anything like that i'm always uh, happy to discuss okay so um, we we well, we obviously have experience in how simsil can be used in courses so anything that comes up we we're happy to discuss then thank you very, very much for joining today. We had a pretty, pretty large attendee list. I really appreciate the effort also, Ahmed, in the organization. Thank, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And just for attendees, um, please fill out the form and hopefully um, we'll give you access to the certificates and the emails. Okay. Yes, uh, please use the um, the King Faisal University email. It makes it so much simpler for us than to follow up. Uh, we don't like giving uh, academics access to Gmail accounts because it could come from anybody. Uh, and uh, yeah, we had bad experiences in the past or people completely abusing our our kind approach. So yeah, we <laughs> currently are careful. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. Everybody, take care and hopefully uh, enjoy enjoy Sipscale. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. Very Goodbye. nice to meet you. Um, يعطيكم العافية جميعاً. اللي خلص سجل في الفورم يقدر يغادر. وشكراً على حضوركم. إن شاء الله استفدت و. إن شاء الله برضو تستفيدون من البرنامج ومن المعلومات اللي كسبتوا اليوم و يعطيكم العافية. <تصفيق>